when this COVID-19 pandemic is over, we cannot go back to business as usual. We have to learn from our past mistakes and change the way we interact with wildlife and we interact with nature. So we think that in the case of um, COVID-19, that the virus originated from a bat and either directly went into a person or possibly more likely spilled over into another species. And then that species got sick and passed the virus on to human being. Now, why might that have happened? Well, bats and other species are, are increasingly trafficked, caught from the wild and trafficked and sold in markets. And during, from capture to point of sale, these animals are mixed with species that they wouldn't normally come into contact with. They're in high um, densities, they're crammed together in cages. Uh, they're stressed over long periods of time. So with their stress, they're more likely to shed any viruses or other pathogens that they carry. At the moment, however, we haven't been able to find the smoking gun, as it were. We haven't been able to find what that intermediate host, if indeed there was one, was. And we haven't found exactly where the COVID-19 virus came from. Wet markets are an obvious place to start because that's a really obvious problem. We're bringing more and more species in higher numbers into wet markets, not just in China, but in many other countries as well. And each wet market is pretty much a time bomb of a zoonotic spillover. In an ideal world, yes, I think uh, wet markets should be banned, but we don't live in an ideal world. So it may be that just increased regulation, better hygiene, reduced global supply chains, not um, selling certain groups of species, such as bats and primates, for example, obvious ones that are risks for zoonotic emergence. So there's been Ebola, there's been Zika, there's been Hendra, there's been Nipah. There, there are lots of these diseases. There are many other viruses that we know of and probably many more that we don't yet know of that are out there in our wildlife populations. But if they get into people, they cause 50%, 60%, 75% case fatality rates. So in some ways we've got lucky and this is a real warning shot um, to humanity that we've got to change our ways. So when we're encroaching into wildlife habitat with plantations, with ranches and, and livestock production, with mining and logging and so on. All those activities increase the risk of zoonotic spillover. And sometimes it's just understanding human behaviours, human interactions with wildlife, with nature, and modifying it. It's not stopping it, it's modifying it to reduce that risk, to mitigate that risk.